Hey everybody, welcome. In this episode, we're going to talk about groups inside of Linux. You might want to check out the previous video where we talked about the basics of users and groups. Now we're going to talk about how to create groups, add users to groups, etc. So the very first thing is you can type in groups to figure out what groups you are a part of. Or what you can do is you can say groups and pass in some username such as a student and get the groups that this user is part of. So the student user is part of the student group. The same information will show up with ID with a little bit of extra information. So one group I wanted to talk about briefly and also to show how to add people to groups is this pseudo group here. This is needed if you want to do something that requires elevated permissions. So for example, let's switch over to a, an account that does not have elevated permissions. So we'll say su hyphen student put in the student password and what we want to do now is we want to say sudo add user test put in the password and it says student is not in the sudoers file this incident will be reported oh snap he just got reported. So what we can do is we can issue the command which we'll have to do it from an elevated account but we can say sudo user mod hyphen a capital G and we're going to add the pseudo group to the account student. So this is the command. And again, it's going to give us the same problem. Student is not in the pseudo errors file. So anytime we prefix something with pseudo, it's not going to work. So let's go ahead and switch over to the other account parallels. All right. And now let's issue that command again. So we will sit. Oh, this is a good point. If you see me scroll up, you'll notice that the command history is different. So the command history is per user. So I can't just scroll up and grab that previous command we tried to execute, which was up here. So what I'll do is I'll just copy this and paste it down here. And there we go. Now what we should do is say groups student and we can see that they are part of the student and the pseudo group. So we can also say man user mod to get a little bit more information about those options. So we have append to add the user to a group. And then there's two options in here that we wanna know about, which is lowercase g right here and uppercase g. You use the uppercase g if you wanna add them to a group or you use lowercase if you wanna change their primary group. So what does that look like? Again, if you say id, it's this group right here. By default, it's just the same as the user account. But for example, you could have a group that is for all students and then they all join that as their primary group. So we used lowercase a uppercase g because we wanted to add a group to their group list but it's good to know about the lowercase g as well. Now when you have files they're going to be owned by a user and belong to a group. So you can see that information with the hyphen l on ls hit enter and we get a little bit extra information. You see we have parallels on here twice for each one of these directories. This first on here is the user owner, and then the second on here is the group. Our username, which has the value parallels, is the same value used for our primary group, parallels. So this is the owner, and then the group it belongs to is also called parallels. Another option is to say ls hyphen g, which will remove the owner and just show the group if that's what you're focused on. So to go through a quick example, I wanna show a file owned by somebody else. Right now everything here is owned by Parallels and is in the Parallels group. So to do this, what I wanna do is I want to take a look at home and in here we have this student directory, which right now is empty, there's nothing in there. So what I wanna do is I want to touch a file in home student and we'll just call this test. And this is going to require sudo because we are putting this inside of someone else's home directory. So we'll do that. And now what I want to do is I want to switch users over to the student account. And we say ls, we see test here. If we go ahead and create a file ourselves, we'll just call it something like assignment. Now when we say ls-l, you can see we have one created by student in the student group, one created by root in the root group. And that's because we used sudo, so it went up to root when we created that file right here. I'll show you another example where it doesn't show root here, but actually another user besides root. And for this, we're going to actually change some file permissions. We're gonna talk about what this command does here soon, 
but we'll just change this directory. So basically we're giving full access to everybody to the current directory. So let's switch users back over to parallels, to the main user, and we're gonna touch another file. This time we don't have to use sudo because we have permission. So we'll go into student and we will just call this test2. And now when we take a look at forward slash home forward slash student, you can see there are three files, one created by the student, one created by root, and one created by parallels. All right, we'll probably look back more at this here soon, but for now I wanted to talk about how to add a group. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say sudo group add, and then we'll just give it a name like students. So this is where all the students can belong in this group. And we can add this to our student account. This is what it's gonna look like. We're going to add the student to the students group. Now, this might be kind of a silly example, but basically you can imagine instead of having a student account, you would have an account for each student. So maybe one for Caleb, one for Sally, one for Sarah, and all of them get added to the students group. So whenever you would say group and pass in some user, well, my bad groups, well, then it's gonna show that they are part of the students group. Every single student can be added to this group. And just to show you, here's how to change the primary group. sudo user mod hyphen g students student. Basically, we're gonna drop the hyphen a g and just use lowercase g. And now when we say id student, you can see their primary group is now students. So you can use these tools to basically give permissions that apply to a group of users. So let's say all of the students should have access to the homework folder, or maybe they all upload their homework to a specific folder, and that's shared within the group. That's just an example of what you can do with these groups here. So earlier on, we used this command, it was chmod. What we're gonna do in the next video is we're gonna introduce that command and talk about how it works. So stay tuned for that, it's gonna be a pretty cool video.